And we began the news at five with updates on that breaking news you've heard about today. A bomb threat put Capitol Hill on lockdown. Thank you for being here with us. I'm Lorenzo Hall. There are a lot of moving parts to this investigation, but here's what we know right now. This all started when a man drove up onto the sidewalk outside the Library of Congress building on First Street in Southeast. Police say making threats. Now, congressional buildings and businesses were evacuated. Some people even had to leave their homes as police negotiated with that suspect. Well, after an hours long standoff, 49 year old Floyd Ray Roseberry, he finally surrendered. You see right there. We are covering every angle of this story from who the suspect is to how some of our neighbors were impacted by all this. But first, we're going to start with our Bruce Lashan. He joins us live near the Library of Congress and Bruce, get us up to speed on what's happening with this investigation. What's happening where you are right now? Hey, Lorenzo, well, police say that this guy drove up onto the sidewalk at the Library of Congress about 930 this morning, heaved a bunch of money out the window of his truck and then took to Facebook Live claiming he had a bomb. Heavily armed tactical teams raced up to surround the truck, sharpshooters deployed and negotiators used a whiteboard to communicate with the man hoping to convince him to give up. It's on you, Joe. I'm ready to die for calls. Roseberry took to Facebook Live, demanding I'm to ready. talk to the you president and threatening to detonate a bomb stuffed in the tool chest in the back of his pickup. A passerby tweeted a photo of him in the truck on the Library of Congress sidewalk, the pavement littered with cash. He had what police thought might be a detonator in his hand. If you want to shoot me and take the chance of blowing up two and a half city blocks, because that toolbox is full. Bone in nitrate, it's full. Officials ordered the evacuation of the Library of Congress, the Cannon House office building, even the Supreme Court. Roseberry said he was desperate for medical help. We cut off health care. I can't even get damn shots for my back no more. About mid-afternoon, police sent in a phone on a robot. The Capitol Police Chief says Roseberry refused the phone, but within minutes climbed out of the truck and surrendered peacefully. We do know uh, that um, Mr. Uh, uh, Roseberry has had some losses of, of family. In his, uh, I believe his mother uh, recently passed away, and uh, we spoke with uh, members of his family and there were other issues that uh, he was dealing with. In the midst of his siege, Roseberry did call on others to join him, calling them patriots. But at this point, police believe he's simply a troubled man acting alone. Now, Chief Major says it will take hours to process the scene, make sure there is nothing dangerous in that truck. Asked if Roseberry would be subject to a mental evaluation the chief said that's going to be up to a judge. Live on Capitol Hill, Bruce Lachan, WUSA 9. Yeah, it sounds like he had a lot going on personally in his life, but it certainly didn't have to lead to this. Bruce, thank you. And as you know, this was a scary situation for everyone nearby. Capitol Hill is also a neighborhood where people live. Our Matthew Torres has been talking to people who had their day disrupted by all this. Matthew, it kind of reminded me of January 6th to a certain extent. What are people telling you there? Well, you know, surprisingly, and maybe it's not a surprise anymore, but residents here feel like it's almost like their normal routine. It's becoming all too common for them here in this particular neighborhood. We're here at 2nd and Independence Avenue where our roads are reopening, but this particular intersection is still being blocked by U.S. Capitol Police as the investigation continues. But earlier today, as people were still milling around waiting to see what happens, D.C. Police even had a bus for people who had to evacuate to either cool off or grab some drinks just to show you uh, what kind of disruption this has been for people. The United States Capitol Police issued a warning just before 10 o'clock this morning. Workers say while they're used to drills and threats of a suspicious package, this one was unusual. It warned of a suspicious vehicle instead. The Jefferson and Madison buildings had to be evacuated. Employees in other buildings were forced to stay put or move into other offices as this investigation continued. Officers blocking several intersections that some businesses near the Library of Congress had to close. D.C. police also spending the afternoon canvassing parts of the neighborhood and asking residents to evacuate outside of the perimeter. Basically, no one can go home that live within three blocks of this area. It's kind of normal, really. I mean, 
that probably sounds weird, but living here um, and even on and off in the last couple of years, you know, it's like when I got off the subway to go to work, I saw the tape up, I said, okay, what else is going on now? And well, that seems to be the reality for that particular neighbor for tourists. It was a surreal and somewhat unbelievable sight here in D.C. during their first time experiencing the city. On one side, you have the large presence of police. On the other side, as you can see, little kids with parents still going about their day. But coming up at six, hear from one of the employees who had to evacuate and really what that what the moment was that made her realize this was a dangerous situation. But for now, reporting live on Capitol Hill, I'm Matthew Torres, WUSA 9. Yeah, I live not too far from there, Matthew. You see the police tape and you know the detours now. And yeah, that is sad. All right, thanks again. Well, for more than a half hour, Roseberry, he was live streaming from inside of his pickup truck. In these types of situations, sometimes you don't know what the uh, suspects are thinking, but in this case, we did. He was ranting about the political motivations behind his bond threat. Our chief investigative reporter, Eric Flack, watched that live stream as it was unfolding. Now, we're not going to play you the entire video, but we do want to give you some extra insight into today's incident with this. And, you know, Flack, we got to point out as well, these views expressed by the suspect have really been a big concern for judges presiding over the Capitol riot cases too, right? Yeah, so and that's why it's so important we kind of delve into some of these videos. Judges presiding over the court cases of the 500 plus Capitol riot defendants have worried openly about the continued threat from extremists still upset over the election of President Biden. The man in custody for what happened on Capitol Hill today did not hide his political views. Now I'm gonna tell y'all y'all out there saying there's a revolution, there's a revolution. Well, I'm building a foundation. As he drove toward the U.S. Capitol in a pickup truck he claimed was filled with explosives, 49 year old Somebody Floyd Ray Roseberry live streamed himself for more than a half hour on Facebook. Before the platform pulled down his feed and his page, Roseberry echoed the same anti Democratic Party fervor that engulfed the U.S. Capitol during the insurrection on January 6th. A number of judges ruling on those criminal cases have openly worried in court that the sentiment that drove the violence and chaos that day remained bubbling up in communities across the country and that further acts of violence in Washington, D.C. remain a real threat. But I'm here for a reason, Joe Biden. I'm here for a reason. I'm here for the American people. Roseberry never articulated what the exact reasons behind his bomb threat were, but repeatedly called on his, quote, fellow patriots to join him in Washington, D.C. We did dig into Roseberry's criminal history today. We didn't find much, a larceny conviction in 1989 for which he got probation. He did two months in jail for resisting a police officer in 1993, but really nothing since. Our North Carolina law enforcement source is telling us the FBI and Homeland Security were at Roseberry's house today interviewing his wife. So yeah, we're going to talk more about that in just a minute. Flack, thank you. And the Verify team has been working all day to bring you the facts. Like Flack said, their Facebook suspended Roseberry's account shortly after he started live streaming. Facebook told our Verify researchers they are in contact with law enforcement and confirmed that the videos violated its dangerous organization policies and said it will remove any reshares of them that do not quote condemn, neutrally discuss or provide neutral news coverage of the incident. They're also temporarily preventing other people on both Facebook and Instagram from creating accounts with the same name as the suspect. Now, right now, FBI agents are down in Cleveland County, North Carolina, an hour west of Charlotte. They are preparing to search Roseberry's home. We're looking for potential uh, explosive devices or any type of explosive materials. We have no reason to believe that uh, there is any danger to the community here in Cleveland County, uh, but that is our goal to eliminate any possible threats here. Yeah, they're trying to get a search warrant so they can go inside. The FBI says at the federal level, they never had any dealings with Roseberry before today, but local law enforcement there in Cleveland County say Roseberry does have a limited arrest history. And you can trust WUSA 9 will have the latest on this investigation. We are still looking into this. For updates anytime, make sure you have our WUSA 9 app on your phone and check for new posts on WUSA 9.com.